Hello amazing hackers, hope you're all doing well today. I'd like to go over the seven main cases of cross-site scripting that everybody should know. This is an article written by Brute Logic, which is a great guy. I'm going to put his uh, his bios in the description as well. And of course this article if you're interested. And this article goes over seven cases which are really interesting and which I think not a lot of people think about. The first one is URL reflection and what Brute Logic does here is he has part of a URL and he's going to reflect that onto the page itself. As you can see right here, he has a form which reflects which is in here as you can see and what brute logic is going to do is he's going to when he the, you see that this part of the URL here cross site scripting.php he's going to try to end the HTML tag attribute with the double quote that he's inserting in the URL there and he's going to break out of the tag with that greater than sign and insert his own tags in there that's a really interesting tag method that I don't think a lot of people, including myself, often think about. And he also says that in PHP, the main culprit for this will be the server PHP, dot, a PHP underscore self variable, which is going to be reflected in the action uh, parameter of a form. Now, there's also the case that he's going to talk about, which is simple HTML injection. This is something that a lot of people have probably seen before. And if we open this page, we can see that it's very simple. He's going to just insert an SVG in the page because this A is going to be reflected. There's nothing going to be stopping it, no filters, nothing. This is very simple HTML injection. And I do, of course, a lot of people are going to know this. Then there's the inline HTML which is a little bit different because as you can see almost as simple as the previous one of course but we need to break out of something we need to break out of a tag this is also known as html tag attribute insertion so what is going to happen is that in this case you see an input field with a value and that value is going to be reflected from the parameter b1 in here and this is going to allow brute logic to enter a double quote again a greater than sign and then insert his own svg tag in there which is also a very valid tag that is a lot more hidden already in my opinion everybody knows about the simple html injection but if we're going to talk about inline html injection or if we're going to talk about html tag attribute insertion that's going to be a different story of course now you know that, now you can watch out for it, of course. Inline HTML injection can also happen when no tag breaking needs to occur. This is something, as you can see here, when input lands an HTML attribute and there's filtering of the greater than characters, you really can't break out of that tag. In that case, we're going to insert our own attributes. And what BruteLogic has done right here in this lab, for example, is he has a mouse over. As you can see, as I hover over it, it's going to pop the alert. That's because an on mouse over alert um, attribute has been inserted in there with the event alert. And that's going to pop whenever I come over it, because as you can see here, it's reflected onto the HTML page. There's nothing stopping it. It's just another HTML tag attribute. It's just going to get executed like everything else. So that might happen if your greater than sign is filtered. There's no way of breaking out of it, of course, out of your HTML tag attribute injection. Now you also have HTML injection in JavaScript. This one is a lot more hidden already because not a lot of people look for reflections in the JavaScript, but I think they definitely should. In this case, that's also happening. And what Brute Logic is going to do is he's just going to close that script tag that he's in, and he's then going to insert his own SVG tag in there. So a very simple attack again, but you have to know that you're working inside of a script. And then you, of course, need to either insert your own JavaScript code, which is also an option. If we go to 
this lab right here, what we see is that he has a script and, and which is ending and then he's going to insert the SVG on with the onload alert. What we could also try to do is break out of the code that we see right here, which would be a single quote in this case. And then we might be able to insert our own JavaScript in here. Now, I don't know if this is going to work on this page. Obviously not. There must be some filter in place or something, or I might not be doing it right. But I'm not going to go into it in this video. The other ones will cover that. But that's also a possibility. You might be able to insert your own JavaScript in there, or you might be able to break out of the script tag. And then that's also possible. Now that simple JS injection is the next one that he's going to show us. Now, as you can see, I've made a mistake in inserting my JavaScript code, which led me to not be able to pop it. But Brute Logic has provided that code for us where the JavaScript injection is also possible. We're not trying to break out of the script tag anymore. We're literally inserting our own JavaScript after killing what's already happening. As you can see, var my var three equals, we're going to kill what's already happening right here, insert our own alert, and then just finish off the JavaScript code so we don't get too many errors. Now, it's also possible that the JavaScript injection, because in the previous case, if the quote which is responsible for the breaking out for breaking out of the variable for breaking out of that variable's value of course if it's escaped with backslash injection won't work as you can see here the backslash is actually escaping this single quote so that means that this quote right here it's opening and this quote is ignored as actual text it's going to get printed as text but it's not taken up in the syntax anymore there's still a possibility, of course, because we can double escape it. As you can see right here, it's been escaped already, and we're going to just escape that escape. So we're going to put another slash in here to make sure that JavaScript ignores the slashes that it puts in itself. And then we can still pop our alert. So those are seven of the main cross-site scripting cases that everybody should know of. And I fully agree of with uh, with um, Brute Logic here. Thank you very very much for making such an amazing article, and I hope everybody goes to read it because this deserves it. And I hope everybody has a better understanding of the basics of cross-site scripting right now. I hope to pique your interest, and I hope I'll see you in the next one. That's love.